Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Radfest stage, author of the global bestseller, The Death of Death, Jose Cudero. Dear friends, we are at Radfest. Do you know what it means? Revolution against aging and death. Viva la revolución! One of the revolutionaries of this country, Benjamin Franklin, said that there are only two things that are certain in life, death and taxes. And he was wrong. <laughs> I studied in, M in MIT. I began working in energy. Now I am totally committed to biotechnology and rejuvenation technologies, like my former mentor and boss, Ray Kurzweil, also from MIT. And he talks about the three bridges to immortality. He writes that in his fantastic book, uh, The Singularity is Near, and next year, The Singularity is Nearer. He sent me the manuscript of the book to review. I am really pleased to tell you, he keeps his forecast. By 2029, we reach longevity escape velocity, and by 2045, we reach immortality through biological rejuvenation. Most people have been catching on these ideas because of exponential changes, exponential technologies, and not just Moore's law, but all technologies that can be digitized are changing exponentially. So things are changing faster, becoming smaller, cheaper, and better. But most people don't understand the power of exponential change. If I give 30 linear steps, after 30 steps, I have walked 30 meters. But if I double every time for 30 times, I have walked over 1 billion meters and going to run planet Earth 26 times. This is the power of exponential technologies. Even life expectancy is changing now exponentially. In the time of the Roman Empire, life expectancy was between 20 and 25. And it has been doubling, doubling, and it will continue doubling. According to the National Science Foundation, there are four technologies that are converging. They are called NBIC. And there are two times, according to Ray Kurzweil, the year 2029, when we pass the Alan Turing test, and we also reach longevity escape velocity. And then, 2045, when we reach the technological singularity, which is a mega global artificial intelligence as powerful as human intelligence combined, but with us, within us, for us, and also immortality through biological rejuvenation. So this is an important time, 2045. Now in Spain, where I'm living, Spain has the second longest life expectancy in the planet among the big countries, only after Japan. But it is actually improving, and Venezuela, Spain, I'm also Venezuelan, but Spain uh, will probably be the country with the longest life expectancy in the next 20 years. And the Spanish people, when they discovered America, they were looking for the fountain of eternal youth. Juan Ponce de Leon and many other people were looking for immortality. Before the discovery of the Americas, Spain was a country of non plus ultra. And the flag said non plus ultra. Then America was discovered in the year 1492. And they took out the non and just called it plus ultra, which is what appears in the Spanish flag. And now the idea is moving from plus ultra into vita plus ultra, which is basically immortality, life forever and ever. I founded a party in Spain for immortality. I ran for the European Parliament. And I was talking for the first time to the public that we are very close to rejuvenation technologies. I had a fantastic campaign, and it got several thousand votes in Madrid. Most political discourse is about details such as corporation tax rates, subsidies for farming, interminable trade negotiations, and who wrote what in which newspaper. But what if politicians are missing the things that really matter? Economist Robert Solow won the Nobel Prize in Economics for showing that 90% of economic growth comes from technology. Yet the EU's investment in artificial intelligence amounts to less than 1% of agricultural subsidies. What politics needs is people who understand how technology, like artificial intelligence, will develop. Jose Cordero is a technologist with degrees from MIT and a PhD in engineering, who has written best-selling books on how we can use technology as the ultimate force for good in society. 
Support Jose as member of the European Parliament this May. He will focus on how we can work together to build a better future for all of us by investing in technology like artificial intelligence, genetics research, and nanotechnology. Well, I didn't make it to the European Parliament yet, but I keep on pushing. And in Madrid, the center of the Spanish-speaking world, uh, we celebrate the best football team, the best soccer team of the world, which is Real Madrid in this place, in the City Hall of Madrid. And here I am organizing Longevity Day in Spain. And we are going to get many people to talk about immortality, longevity, health in this fantastic place on October 1st. All of you are welcome. Things are moving very fast. All of you should do something on October 1st. But things are moving so fast that the uh, X Prize longevity prize will be launched in a couple of months in Saudi Arabia. This is the biggest prize, private prize in history, $101 million. This will be open to anyone working on rejuvenation technologies. This is partially paid by Evolution Foundation in Saudi Arabia because everybody is understanding that this is real, this is happening. I was a couple of times last year in Dubai in the Museum of the Future talking about immortality in Dubai. They are also interested. Abu Dhabi and Dubai, the two big parts of the United Arab Emirates, are also interested in immortality. Why? Because in these COVID times, we discovered that the number one risk factor of death is age. Age is the big enemy. But COVID is nothing in historical terms. COVID has not killed as many people as the Black Death. One out of three Europeans died in Spain during the Black Death and all over Europe. And we have other pandemics. We had the Spanish flu that was not a Spanish and it was not the flu. And we have AIDS and many other things that are killing more people than COVID. COVID again, age, Age is the number one risk factor for any, any disease, basically. And also diseases were separate, but now we know they are centered on aging. Aging is the real enemy. And so, five years ago, my fantastic co-author, who is sitting here, David Good, uh, an applause for him. <laughs> we wrote this book about the biggest issue for humanity, which is aging and death. He studied at Cambridge, England. I studied at Cambridge, Massachusetts. And our book has been a global bestseller, first in Spanish, now in all languages. And uh, it is coming also in Chinese. I'm really excited. The three most important languages of the world, English, Chinese, and Spanish, and more languages to come up. And why? Because China also, the population of China is going down. So this is a big, big issue in China. China is going to lose half of its population in the next uh, century. century. Anyway, so today we consider aging as a curable disease. We have been able to double the life expectancy of mice, multiply by four. Uh, Michael Ross is here. Uh, he actually was able with his team to multiply by four the life expectancy of um, Drosophila melanogaster, and by 10, um, the life expectancy of mice, uh, worms, worms. So we also know that immortality already exists. Biology discovered immortality. So when people tell me that immortality is impossible, I say, how can it be impossible? It already exists. Cancer discovered immortality. And cancer didn't go to Cambridge University or to MIT. We are going to discover what cancer did, for example. And there are also good cells. The germ cells also are biologically immortal. And there are small organisms like hydras, jellyfish, that are also biologically immortal. And bacteria, the first bacteria with round chromosomes, also they do not age. They are considered biologically immortal. Many of these ideas were brought up by our dear friend Aubrey de Grey, who was sadly called nuts by my university. MIT Technology Review said that basically he was nuts in 2005. Happily, in 2019, they realized that Aubrey de Grey was always right, and that we are going to stop aging very soon. Yeah. All truth goes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed, like Aubrey de Grey, or myself, or many of us, 
then it is opposed, and then finally it is accepted as self-evident. In the year 2045, we will remember today when we let people die. How sad. But also we will remember how old we were today compared to the younger us in the future. All companies are investing into this, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. Jeff Bezos created a company uh, with the Nobel Prize winner, Shinja Yamanaka, that we gave an award last year in Madrid. And we want to create the fifth Altos Lab Center in Madrid with Shinja Yamanaka and with Jeff Bezos. And other scientists working on this, uh, like we know uh, David Sinclair and many, many other people. This will be the biggest economy in the history of humanity. I don't know what you do, and I don't care. If you are not into rejuvenation, you are not into the future. This will be the biggest industry in the planet. So in the future, I plan to be younger. Not through a Russian application. I plan to be younger through biological rejuvenation. And so I recommend that you come to our stand signing books, David uh, Wood and myself, and join the revolution! Yeah.